On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And when Jesus saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And Jesus said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. There are few words that have the power to change your life like these two words. These two words, thank you. Today I want to talk about the gratitude attitude. We heard the lesson today of how Jesus healed the ten lepers. Leprosy was a skin disease that was fairly common in the time of Jesus, a terrible disease. This text is commonly appointed for the celebration of Thanksgiving. And we hear in this story, while Jesus heals the ten lepers, there is only one who returns to come and give thanks and to praise his healer. Now, as Americans, we set aside one day of the year for giving thanks. It's called Thanksgiving, and it's about a month and a half away. But the thing is that Thanksgiving is not really for one day of the year. Thanksgiving is for every moment of our lives. We're called to live in thanksgiving and praise of the one who gave us our life and thanksgiving and praise of the one who has redeemed our souls and praise and thanksgiving to the one who has given to us the promise of eternal life. Again, we read the story. There were 10 that were healed. But Jesus asks the question, why did only one return to give thanks? What was so important for the other nine that they couldn't stop for a moment? And remember the one who gave them their healing. The thing is, is that things, as much as they change, things don't change. And in much the same way today, in the busyness, in the hurriedness of life, so many of us, we fail to live in daily appreciation and gratitude. And the reality is that there are consequences when we fail to live in gratitude. One of the consequences of failing to give thanks is that it creates dissatisfaction in our hearts and in our lives. If happiness was based upon how much we have, well, then Americans would be the happiest people who have ever walked the face of this earth. But the truth be told, even though it's written in the Declaration of Independence that we're dedicated to the pursuit of happiness, we're not all that happy. We are the most heavily medicated nation on the face of this earth. And the number one category of prescription drugs is 
Antidepressants. Something is off there. And I think a big part of it is that we fail to live in gratitude of what we have. And when we do that, it creates dissatisfaction in our lives. It creates envy. Another thing. We look at what other people have and we begin to compare ourselves. In fact, I'm going to pause for a moment. One of the ways in which we try to be grateful is we do so through guilt. We look at other people in other parts of the world and think about all the things that they don't have that we have and we guilt ourselves. We do it with our kids, right? And we're sitting down at the, the dinner table and I say, be happy you have a meal <laughs> because there's a lot of kids who would be happy to have just one meal a day. And so we guilt gratitude. Uh, but the reality is, is if, if, if gratitude comes as a result of comparison, you're always going to find people who have less than you have, but at the same time, you're going to find people who have more than you have, oftentimes much more than you have. And why is it that we have so much consumer debt in our nation? Again, I believe a big part of it stems from a lack of gratitude in our hearts, appreciating that which we already have. Another thing a lack of gratitude does is it fosters entitlement. Oftentimes we're very good at seeing the sense of entitlement that people around us often carry about them, but we fail to see the sense of entitlement that we walk around with ourselves. And this idea of entitlement is, I deserve. And we live in pride and arrogance rather than humility. Humility, as Jesus calls us, the one who says, I came not to be served, but I came to serve. The fourth thing is that a lack of gratitude breeds a spirit of complaint. You go on to the internet, you go into social media, and those places can be toxic so often. People love to complain, right? We complain about our experiences, we complain about other people. There's no end to all of the things that we complain about. And maybe you know that person, you know that, that person that never has anything good to say about anything or anyone else, that all they do is they complain and complain and complain and they're this negative nanny. Do you want to be around that person? And the answer is no, you don't really want to be around that person. So I could add a fifth thing here. With a lack of gratitude, as it breeds that spirit of complaint, it is also, it, it injures our relationship with others. When you fail to appreciate others and feel to, fail to appreciate the good that they bring into, their, into your life and only see the negative. So, those are some of the things that a lack of gratitude cause. I also want to point out some of the positive benefits of gratitude. These are things, I'm not going to go into all of the studies, but these are things that were scientifically shown to be benefit to gratitude. The first thing is that gratitude, it reduces stress. Anyone anxious? Anyone stressed here? You live in New Jersey, let's face it. <laughs> You're stressed. Gratitude, it's shown to reduce our stress. It also inoculates us from negative emotions, always fearing the worst. Again, you know, related to anxiety. Number three, it sustains relationship. We look at, at a culture uh, that is, divorce is something that is so prevalent, broken relationships, but gratitude, it will sustain our relationships. Number four, it improves our health. Go figure. Gratitude improves your health. Just like exercise improves your health. Properly dieting and eating improves your health. So also gratitude improves your health as well. So some of the benefits of gratitude. So why should we be grateful? I have a video I want to share with you here this morning. So I want you to just take a moment, pause, stop, uh, declutter your mind, declutter your heart, 
and uh, just receive this word here this morning. You think this is just another day in your life? It's not just another day. It's the one day that is given to you today. It's given to you. It's a gift. It's the only gift that you have right now. And the only appropriate response is gratefulness. If you do nothing else but to cultivate that response to the great gift that this unique day is, if you learn to respond as if it were the first day in your life, and the very last day, then you will have spent this day very well. Begin by opening your eyes and be surprised that you have eyes you can open. That incredible array of colors that is constantly offered to us for pure enjoyment. Look at the sky. We so rarely look at the sky. We so rarely note how different it is from moment to moment with clouds coming and going. We just think of the weather. And even of the weather, we don't think of all the many nuances of weather. We just think of good weather and bad weather. This day, right now, is unique weather maybe a kind that will never exactly in that form come again. The formation of clouds in the sky will never be the same that is right now. Open your eyes, look at that. Look at the faces of people whom you meet. Each one has an incredible story behind their face story that you could never fully fathom. Not only their own story, but the story of their ancestors. We all go back so far. And in this present moment, on this day, all the people you meet, all that life from generations and from so many places all over the world, flows together and meets you here like a life-giving water if you only open your heart and drink. Open your heart to the incredible gifts that civilization gives to us. You flip a switch and there is electric light. You Turn a faucet and there is warm water and cold water and drinkable water. It's a gift that millions and millions in the world uh, will never experience. So these are just a few of an enormous number of gifts to which we can open your heart. And so I wish you that you will open your heart to all these blessings and let them flow through you, that everyone whom you will meet on this day will be blessed by you. Just by your eyes, by your smile, by your touch, just by your presence. Let the gratefulness 
overflow into blessing all around you. And then it will really be a good day. As we think about cultivating and growing gratitude and the importance of doing that. Going back to our story, Jesus heals the ten lepers. I would be interested to see the rest of the story, how it turns out, and to the trajectory the lives of those lepers took, the healed lepers. Where did life take the nine? And where did life take the one who treasured gratitude in his heart towards Jesus? I imagine it took the one in a much different place than it took the other nine. There are a few things that will change your outlook and the trajectory of your life. Again, like those two words, thank you. So how do we cultivate gratitude in our hearts the first and this is the most important stop stop pause and turn around what i mean by that is just to look back and to look in at the many ways in which god has blessed you we're always going Going, going. And in the midst of our going, we never take the time to appreciate all that we have. That's why Sunday morning is set apart for this, for worship, for praise to our God, to get our minds right, right where it needs to be. We, in a little bit, are going to come to this table to receive the Lord's Supper. Another name for this meal, it's often called the Eucharist. Translate that into English, it means to give thanks. And as we receive this, Jesus says to do this in remembrance. To remember and to recall all that he has done for us. And it's easy with our busy lives. I'm sure there are many things that you had to do this morning that you could have been doing. But you stop. You came here to remember and recall the goodness of God. And it sets your week in a very different trajectory than many other people who are simply busy doing all that may not be all that important. A second thing, write. Memorialize. Make a list of the things that you have to be grateful for. And this is where exercise comes into play. I'd encourage you, make a list of 20 things. And if you come up with 20 things to be grateful for. The, the reality is, is that we can all probably come up with one or two things real quick, real fast. Maybe five things, maybe 10 things. I'm thankful for God. I'm thankful for salvation. I'm thank you for, thankful for my family. I'm thankful for the air that I breathe. You can make a list of, uh, of 10, a dozen things, but, but come up with a list of, of 20 things. Flex that gratitude muscle. Exercise that gratitude muscle. Come up with all the things that you have to be thankful for, and when you can't come up with anything more to be grateful for, come up with a few more. And, and maybe today it's difficult to come up with 20 things to be grateful for, but when you exercise that gratitude muscle, and today you come up with 20 things to be grateful for, guess what? Tomorrow, you'll come up with 25. And the next day, you'll come up with 30. And the day after that, you'll come up with 40. 
And the day after that, you'll come up with 60. As we practice gratitude, it becomes easier to live it out. Third thing, express your gratitude. Don't keep it to yourself. Give it away. I, I gave to all of our kids at the early service during the children's message. Thank you cards. And one of the things they, they opened up and they said, there's nothing inside. There's a reason there's nothing inside a thank you card because this is your opportunity to express it, your opportunity to share your gratitude with someone else. Related to expressing gratitude, express it publicly. Share your appreciation about someone with someone else. One of the most important people, if you're married, one of the most important people to express your gratitude publicly towards is your spouse. A lot of us, we're real good at making sarcastic comments, right? And we have often made sarcastic comments publicly towards people who are important to us, but oftentimes we fail to actually express appreciation, true appreciation, towards those who are important to us in a public way. It's important to express gratitude privately, but it's also important to express it publicly. The fifth thing is this, make it a habit. You know, as a nation, we make it a habit to do it one day a year. And I'm encouraging you to try a number of different things to cultivate gratitude in your life. But don't just do it after you come home today or once later on this week during your devotion time. But make it a regular habit in your life, whether it is a weekly habit of expressing gratitude or whether it be a daily habit of expressing gratitude. Because the more we express gratitude, the more that we're going to live that out. And there's no one more important that we express our gratitude towards than Jesus, our Savior. As we focus on him, so often we make faith about things that we're anticipating, things that we want God to do for us. But the truth be told, God's given us already more than we deserve. He's already poured so much into our life. And as we look back to the cross and remember in gratitude what Jesus has done, we treasure in our heart and hold the promise that if, he does, if he'll do that for us, what else will he not? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we have so much to be grateful for. So often we're, we're running, we're hurried, we're busy, and we don't stop. We're focused on what we don't have. We're focused on what other people are not. Help us, Lord, today to, to live in appreciation of the moment, live in appreciation of the things that we have, live in appreciation of the people, Lord, that though they may be rough around the edges sometimes, Lord, that they are a blessing in our lives. Help us to praise you, one from whom all blessings flow, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, to flex that gratitude muscle, to grow in appreciation each and every day. Lord, that just as you have blessed us, Lord, that we would be a blessing to others, to our spouses, to our children, to co-workers, to friends, to neighbors, to perfect strangers, and yes, Lord, to even our enemies. Then to your hands, Lord, we commend all of this for which we pray, trusting in your mercy. It's in Jesus' holy name, all God's people said, Amen. And one of the ways we express our gratitude towards God 
is through the gifts of our offerings. So we take this opportunity now to bring our tithes and our offerings for the Lord. <laughs> 